okay uh, good morning welcome hi francis hello everyone online and what's happening hi nikhil hi sri radha hi anand how are the assignments going pretty hectic guys i hear church history yeah huh? Nice, nice. Well, I hope you all are doing well. Um, Christian history or church history? <laughs> <laughs> so, Rin is not sure of the assignment. <laughs> I, I, I'm not studying. <laughs> Okay, all right. Let's come back to the local church. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we finished uh, chapter four last class. Uh, it talks from your notes, uh, the house of God, chapter four. Uh, we just do a quick uh, review of it. We did two uh, two case studies of two different churches. One is the Jerusalem Church and the Antioch Church. Uh, how they grew and. Uh, and we looked at the different stages of growth, from the pioneering stage to administrative stage, pastoral equipping stage, uh, and apostolic function stage, et cetera, et cetera. OK? Um, yeah, uh, so all of the stages, I think, for you, uh, if you yourself as leaders, uh, are kind of important uh, just to remember these stages. Uh, it is very easy just to look at it as uh, information from a course that you studied, uh, which Roshan taught. And forget about it uh, but uh, i think uh, and especially this subject and most of the subjects that in the college uh is very practical um you know it's not necessarily academically you know standard when it comes to theological studies but so because this is practical i just want to emphasize it just to remember them um, i'm sure i'm sure it will come in handy when you go back home and i'm you know i'm sure you will be reviewing all of these later on as well okay uh, let's move on to chapter 5 chapter 5 is titled what makes a strong local church what makes a strong local church okay so it's a question for us um, so what according to you, what do you think makes a strong local church? Sure. <laughs> okay. Yes. Mike. All right, guys, one, one, one at a time. <laughs> slowly, slowly. Okay, so who wants to? Okay, you said something first. Yeah. So it depends on the pastor. First. Depends on the pastor. Okay. Strong leadership and fellowship. Strong leadership and fellowship makes a strong local church. Depends on the pastor. If the pastor is strong physically, spiritually, mentally. Okay. And, and the um, doctrine, what they're following, and then doctrine, what they're following. Okay, what makes you strong? Okay, I think you ought to write these points down because it's those are your answers, uh, you know, and uh, and some good ones. <laughs> so, so, what makes a strong local church? Uh, yeah, feel free to um, post online on chat section as well if you want to. Or you can unmute and speak uh, as well. Okay. Yeah, Francis. The unity of the congregation. The, the unit, unity. unity of the congregation. The relationship yeah. between pastor and the relationship between the pastor and the congregation. That's awesome. Yeah, it makes a strong local church. Okay, it talks about unity. That's a wonderful point. Make a note of it. <laughs> Make a note of your own point. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Yeah. Come on. Nina, what do you think? Sri Radha, what do you think? What makes a strong local church? You can add more to the points that you've given. Yeah. Also, their faith. Whose faith? 
Their faith <laughs> make? The people's faith and the okay. pastor's faith, right. if it's if they have people's a strong faith or not. Okay. People's faith. How much they are actually following what's being taught? The word. Right. Okay. So how much of doing is actually happening versus okay just listening okay a praying church uh, says nina uh, shivkumar says spirit filled leader and church members wow okay anything else nina what makes a strong local church spirit filled yeah as shivkumar just said as well yeah spirit Filled. Okay. All of, cooperation. Okay. So let's go from the beginning. Um, so you said pastor depends on the pastor, uh, doctrine, unity, um, and uh, fellowship, praying, church. Okay. So all of this, uh, some amazing points can have sub points, or it can just have a you know, be like a goal. Uh, so you, if you, you're starting a church, you're planting a church, you want your church to be uh, a spirit-filled church. I want my church to be spirit-filled. You write on the board, right? You know, goal board or whatever. Uh, and then you can ask us, okay, so how are we going to attain that? Right? Uh, how are we going to attain that? How are we going to have a faith-filled congregation, as you said? So it, these are not just one point. So these are like it could be a header, and then under that you can have your mission and you know and whatnot. Um, so yeah, all of it's. I I don't see why we have to continue doing this chapter, but because <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you've already uh, mentioned all the points that's in the chapter. But uh, yeah, guys, you're awesome. You know, talk about leaders. You're out there. Okay. Devotion to the apostles' teaching, yeah, word breaking of the bread, fellowship, and prayer, yes, yeah. Word has to be preached and taught without compromise, okay. Word has to be preached and taught without compromise. That's such powerful and insightful uh, points, guys. Um, and I say, I say this again, so please make a note of your own points uh, or of, of all the points that was mentioned, because all of this is going to come in handy uh, later on when you decide to just flip the page in your notes and see it's like ah i wrote this These are, you know uh, but good um so in this chapter we look at one of the points that when we look at what makes a strong local church uh the first thing that's mentioned is a church where there is a strong leadership with uh, a god-given vision okay a strong leadership depends on the starts from the pastor Yes, there's so much pressure on the pastors, guys. Okay, or, or, or leaders. All of you are leaders, right? <laughs> so, a church where there is a strong leadership with a God given uh, vision. Okay, so before we get into strong leadership, um, vision. Give me your definition of vision. Okay. The power of your vision is what? 0.25. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Use the mic, please. Yeah. Vision is like where the pastor, uh, with this God-given vision, like where my, where the, where you're going to lead the people, okay. shepherding, like uh, they want to take from uh, the that level one to uh, high, I mean, okay. to a higher level of higher worshiping level. God and knowing the word. Okay. Okay. Thank you. A picture of the future. A picture of the future. Wow. Rhyming, huh? poetry. <laughs> Blast from the past. Picture from the future. <laughs> Having a goal or mission for life. Having a goal or a mission for life. Having a goal or a mission. Mission for life. Okay. Vision but is mission for life. Vision is mission for life. Okay, what is the difference? You brought this on yourself, okay? Okay, what is the, no? What is the difference between a vision and a mission? Mission, uh, it's like a uh, certain task to be done. Sorry, what's that? One task to be done, or like what? 
vision okay. or mission 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 is a certain task to be yeah. done okay like when there is one especially in taking for example of wars and all like they have this is our mission we have to go there and do it okay acquire. that's the mission yeah what's so the vision having many missions maybe or one certain mission for whole a vision is to have many missions yeah. <laughs> or having one certain constant one goal goal okay okay confirmation like what we going to do what if not confirm that we should ask how he going to use us that is like a confirmation our future future time all, right, all that is wonderful but what is the difference between vision and mission <laughs> hmm Yeah, so vision is the ultimate thing. That's what, like you say, you want to go from step one to step ten. The vision is you want to go to step ten, right? That's the end goal, right? The end game. But the mission is what are you going to do to get there? That those are missions. And so, as you said, if you want to, the vision is to keep having more missions. Then uh, <laughs> it's like epic, bro. It's like. What's my next uh, mission? It's like my next mission is the next mission. <laughs> Get to the next vision. Yeah, what is what what is your definition of vision? Let's come back to that. Why is and and why is vision important? It, it's vision means it's actually different for everyone. So it may be uh, the guidance of God that where He wants to lead us in right. our life. Uh, Certain people have different. I mean, it varies from person to person. Okay. So it is one of the uh, God's guidance or God's desired position to be. To where be He wants you uh, to be. Okay. He wants right. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? Vision, Francis. I think it doesn't have to be like a perfect definition. Uh, just what is your understanding of a vision? Like, um, okay. So tell me what happens when you don't have a vision. Sorry. You don't know what you're going to do. Okay. Always have doubts. Okay. Has have anyone one of you been in a place where you don't know what to do next? <laughs> Constantly, <laughs> consistently. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, that happens to me also. It's like, oh, Lord, what's my next season going to look like? I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, vision, I think, is very essential, isn't it? For um, and, 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 and this is not just biblical. Uh, from the corporate world, it's universal that every institution or organization or corporation uh, will have this mission statement or a vision statement, isn't it? Yeah. It's like we stand for this, we stand for that. You know, go to any hospital, they will just not have the name of the hospital. Under the hospital, they'll have something else, touching lives, touching million lives, saving lives, blah, 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 all that, you know. Um, so having a vision gives you a certain purpose or aim in life on how you can get there, uh, isn't it? So it's like, it's, it's a very cliche example, forgive me for using this, but uh, like Google Maps. Most of the, sometimes Google Maps is very irritating. Right, it, it takes you in certain roads, which is possible. But you, but what you do, the first thing what you do is you are here. You want to go there, isn't it? So you put in the location. Uh, you have to, isn't it? So you are envisioning where you have to go or where you want to go. So you basically having a vision simply tells you where you want to go or where you have to go, right? And then you will have on the way to get there. Okay, you know. Like just like Google Maps, you can say uh, you, you can go this option one. You take a left, similar as ETA, that you know estimated time of arrival. You can take this route, you know. And so, having a vision and being open-minded about God's leading is very essential. So on the way to that vision, God may say, "Okay, let's just hey, take a detour," you know, etc. Uh, etc. Et so so all of that is kind of very essential. So let's look at Proverbs chapter twenty-nine, verse eighteen. 
Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. Can you read that again, please? Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, uh, but okay. happy is he who keeps the law. Yeah, thank you. Uh, which uh, translation version is that? So, NKJV. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so with, without revelation, right? With God's revelation, um, People cast off restraint. Uh, ESV says, where there is no prophetic vision. Right? See how uh, it's an interesting choice of words. Revelation, uh, prophetic vision. Um, so hearing from God is what? It's, it's being prophetic, isn't it? So you hear from God, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? Why are you calling me for this ministry? So it's very interesting. It says, without a revelation or a prophetic vision or a word from God, the people cast off restraint. What does that mean? Casting off restraint. What does cast off restraint mean? Uh, does anybody have a message version you want to look at? If you can. Let's see what cast off restraint. What God is doing is stumble all over themselves. Okay, people can't see what God is doing. People can't see. If people can't see what God is doing, yeah. they stumble all over themselves. Yeah, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. Uh, that means the casting of restraint, restraint is what? It's uh, something is resisting you. Mm. Like some, or something is kind of give, you know, Stop. telling you to go in a certain direction. Right? So casting of restraint means you're just taking it all off. Or you're running around like a headless chicken. You know, wherever you want to go, however you want to like, uh, you know, one of the perfect definitions of uh, vision uh, I, I remember is that when having no vision is like running on a treadmill. Has anybody run on a treadmill? No. <laughs> yeah, so you're running, a lot of things are happening, but you're in the same place. <laughs> right? Um, so without vision is kind of very similar. Is um, You're doing a lot of things as a, as a ministry, as an organization, you can do a lot of things. Uh, if there is no vision, it's like simply, uh, you know, like running on a treadmill. There's a lot of things happening, but you're just there. Uh, can someone read uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2? Yeah. Then the Lord said to me, write my answers plainly on table tablets mm. so that a runner can carry the correct message to others yeah thank you it says the lord answered me and he's saying write the vision so uh there's another important verse he doesn't just say have a vision but write it down mm. make it plain that means make it simple make it uh, understandable or communicate it on, make it plain on tablets. That means write it on the stone, basically. Those, that's what tablets is not iPad. Okay. <laughs> so, so he may run who reads it. So you, you see the choice of words there. You have a vision. Write it down. Communicate it. So those who are doing or running have a direction on which side to run or where to go, isn't it? You're not, again, not just running wherever you want. <laughs> run okay so it's very easy uh you know so um matthew 15 14 says uh it talks about blind leading the blind can can a blind lead the blind um answer can a blind lead the blind no uh right i mean it talks about it's using the tangible to explain the intangible that means it's using the blind it they're using the language of the sight you can have sight and still not have vision that were two very different things. Okay, you can have sight but not have vision. Um, so, 
here in this example, in this verse, Matthew 15, 14, when it says, and if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. It's simply saying a person without a vision leading a uh, you know, bunch of people is it's dangerous, so to speak. Okay, uh, How many of you have seen, um, I'm, I'm sure there are, but I, I haven't seen a lot of doctors who are blind. Right? A lot of doctors who are blind. I'm sure there are. They might be. I'm not saying never, but I, I haven't encountered. I would be very nervous if I know that a blind doctor is doing a surgery on me. <laughs> I like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so where's my hand right now? <laughs> I don't want you cutting in the wrong places, you know. So it'd be. It's quite a risky thing, isn't it? Um, so I think one of the first things that we need to establish as leaders uh, is when you especially, it's a very good place to be in when you don't know what to do next, because you don't know what to do next. It's a good place to be in because that tells you that you need a vision. Right? It's, it's beautiful to be in that place. It's like, Lord, I don't know what to do next. Because you are 100% hopefully dependent on God. Right? If he doesn't come through, he doesn't come through. It's as simple as that. Uh, you know, and Moses kind of understood that in so many ways. It's like, yeah, promised land is there. It's it's all good. We, I'm not interested in the angels. But if you don't come, I'm not going to go. Right? If you, So I might want to do this, 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 X, Y, and Z. But uh, if you don't, you know, tell me where to go, I'm not going to do anything. Okay? Um, so in addition to a vision, okay, that is in addition, so you need to have vision without, uh, you know, a doubt. So in addition to a clear vision from God, we also need strong leadership. We also need super strong leadership, huh? strong leadership. Okay, so uh, come on, define strong leadership. What, what are the leadership qualities that you like to see in a leader? Who sets an example? Who sets an example? Okay. Pass the mic. A godly character. A godly character. Okay. Right, wait, wait. Write down those points, okay? These are your classmates. Uh, say, okay. So a strong leadership is uh, who, one who sets example. Godly character. Okay. Humility. Humility. Okay. A leader who is humble. This is again just don't give me an answer for the sake. It's it's. I want it to be an answer, which you like to see in a leader. Okay, so don't just say okay. Oh, these are the leaders I've read. John Maxwell's uh, Twenty Four Leadership. Blah blah blah. Nothing. <laughs> so, what are the qualities that you like to see in a leader? First, and leader should uh, leader should apply himself after he should teach. Okay, so be an example. Yeah, thanks, Nikhil. Who Police can, from the front, Shiv Kumar says, sorry. Who can handle everything? Who can handle everything? So that's the quality that you like to see in a leader. Yes. Okay. A leader should be um, hearing from the Lord and should be uh, able to deliver. It. Oh, yeah. A leader should be <laughs> able to hear from the Lord. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Though he, okay. He sets an example. Okay. Uh, those online, Prabhu is saying one who leads by example. Yeah. Wow. It's come like one, three, four times now. One who leads by example. <laughs> So, yeah, go ahead. You say. Um, who is responsible? Who is responsible? And a good listener. And a good listener who is responsible. So these are qualities that you like to see. Okay. Who's responsible? Define responsible. Um, like if the leader is given a task, mm -hmm. the leader does it well mm -hmm. and puts um his full effort into it. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jackson says leader has to preach. Uh, what they practice and be, I think it went the other way around. Just, okay, and be fully convinced in the faith and word of God and be led by the Spirit. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, should be a good steward of the things trusted with. To be a good steward with the things responsible, okay, and accountable. That's what yeah, stewardship is. Yeah, accountability. Yeah. Um, how many of you have uh, encountered uh, bad leadership? 
how many of you have experienced or encountered bad leadership or general anywhere wherever it doesn't have to be spiritual or church at all right okay so what was one of the things about that long leadership that bothered you i'm not talking about a person i'm talking about you know the expression of that leadership that that did not uh, help you partiality okay double standards partiality yeah okay so write this down as well okay things that you don't like to see in a leader okay <laughs> You experienced it. Yes. I want you to say what you've experienced, what you've seen. It's like having that. This is what I told. This is have to be done. I don't want to take suggestions of what you are telling. Okay. So he's not a good listener. He or she, leader. <laughs> okay. Too nosy. <laughs> Who are you talking about, Rin? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Anything? Radha, sorry, Sri Radha. I thought you had something to say. Huh. What the leader is saying, instructing to other people what he first he need to do. Mm -hmm. like, or else the uh, the who is uh, following him, they will get on uh, like misunderstanding, or they will get on reconnection. No, they lost their connection with the leader. He's doing like this. Okay, okay. Where should we do that type of? It's look right. Okay. Gossiping. Uh, <laughs> Emo so emotional. Emotional. Yeah. Okay. We are all emotional beings. What's wrong about being emotional? I mean, uh, yeah. Be, uh, specific. I'd say over emotional. Okay, over emotional. <laughs> emotional. Uh, okay, that's not good enough. Yeah, over emotional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not uh, not being able to endure the difficult situation when it comes, just bursting out and shouting on the. Not being able to handle a situation. Tough situation. Or, or control situation. Okay. Okay, uh, Jackson says aggressive and manipulative. Wow, okay. Um, manipulative, yeah. Aggressive and manipulative. Wow, I hope you made a note of all these points that you've given. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm sure all of these, yeah, bad qualities that you've kind of experienced it. Yeah. Um, for me, I think one of the important qualities that I look for in a leader is. Uh, sure, example, and all of that goes without saying, uh, but some, there's something about uh, handling people well. If you can handle people well, or if you know how to handle people well, if you don't know how to handle people well, that means for me it's, uh, it's one of the qualities of not being a very strong leader because you're leading people at the end of the day, isn't it? Um, so how well are you able to relate to them? Are they able to relate to you? It's not just you to them. It's about um, how they look at you. Is also very important, isn't it? And so if, if I'm speaking to an audience, it's very important for me to know that are they viewing, uh, are they looking at me as a pastor or as a teacher or as a friend or as their brother, whatever it is, right? And so depending on how they view at me, I can connect to them at their level. You get what I'm saying, right? So uh, I think um, it's super important. Uh, and I've learned, uh, so I watch a lot of football, right? Uh, English football. Uh, and uh, all the interviews about, uh, you know, the football managers and the team. Uh, and I like to do a lot of study, leadership studies and all of that is, it all comes down to man management. That's the word, <laughs> right? Man management, that's very corporate. Uh, man management, we are not managing, we are leading, you know, but there's a difference. Um, yeah, so uh, I mean, everybody's not a perfect work. Uh, we're all working towards 
becoming better in all of these areas that you've mentioned. So yeah, all of that is are the great definitions of being a strong leadership. All of this is an addition to the vision. Now you can have all of this good qualities of a leader and without a vision is absolutely useless. Right. And so a good, a strong leadership, like Nina mentioned, right? It's a, being able to hear from the Lord. If you've heard from the Lord, that means you have a vision. And then you kind of, okay, you work on how to, uh, you know, grow. So Moses kind of grew into a leadership role. Like, you know, so God gives him the vision. He says, go to Egypt, bring my people back. He, Moses, I don't know how, God has an amazing patience. You know, you read that chapter, is like, why me? Why should I go? Why me? Why should I go? I can't speak to someone else and someone else. <laughs> Uh, so it's like, yeah, it's not a good leader. <laughs> I want confidence in a leader, you know. So, but God is amazing. Uh, he sees, uh, you know, he has a vision of who Moses can be, and so he pushes, isn't it? Uh, so that's the beauty of uh, our Lord, and I think it's a, a very important character of a, a good leader will have is that he sees the potential in what you can be, right? And you work with that person until you can get that person there. Isn't it? And so that's vision and uh, strong leadership is essential, to say the least. There are a couple of scriptures mentioned in your notes. You can make a note of it. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 7, and um, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16. Okay, we dwelt quite a bit of time on this point because it is important. Uh, we're still in the topic that talks about what makes a strong local church. Okay, you might be a pastor one day soon, uh, leading a church, or you might be a leader in a church. Okay. It's, it's okay, Rin. It's fine. No pressure. Nobody is forcing you to become pastor. It's okay. So, right. But all of you are already leaders. Right? You're, you're, you know, in many ways, you know, for the, to the first years. Pressure. <laughs> right. Uh, in Zechariah 13, uh, 7, it says, uh, you, we can read the scripture later, but in a gist, what it simply says is, if the shepherd fails, the sheep are scattered. Right? If the shepherd fails, the sheep are scattered. Uh, that means if the sheep cannot hear the voice of the shepherd, they have no direction. So they go, there's no restraint. They begin to go everywhere, isn't it? Um, and so they begin to do whatever they want to do. Um, they'll panic. And the, uh, again, I'm um, sorry to keep using this example from Exodus is, and Moses was away with God in the mountains for all the right reasons, for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, for them, the, their shepherd is not there, is the leader. And so they cast off their restraints. They began to do whatever they wanted to do, isn't it? Yeah. So um, there's a wonderful video, and maybe when we speak about Psalm 23 eventually, uh, when I was doing a study on Psalm 23, I found this beautiful video on YouTube. Uh, it talk, it shows, uh, you know, a bunch of people uh, just trying to call the sheep. The sheep is like all over the, they're grazing on, on a field, beautiful green grass field. They're trying to call, make different sounds. The sheep don't respond. The shepherd comes and he starts calling them. He just makes weird sounds, you know. Everyone starts you know, running towards this one man's voice because, I mean, that example from John chapter 10, that my sheep hear me and know my voice, is so beautifully portrayed in that video. Uh, and yeah, and and that's what Zechariah 13.7 is talking about. Um, so without vision, uh, without strong leadership, a lot of things can go wrong. OK. Uh, any thoughts or any questions so far? Are you following with me? All OK? Oh, yeah, yeah, I have the video. I'll share it. Yeah, I'll share. It's the shepherd video, right? Just to be clear. <laughs> yeah, OK. Anything else, guys? Any thoughts that you want to share? Questions?
Okay, on a side note, uh, last year, earlier last year, Pastor did, Pastor Ashish did a series on leadership called the four C's of leadership. Uh, go back and revisit those. Uh, it's very helpful. Um, I'm sure it'll be very helpful. The four C's. Uh, one more other thing, Pastor, like, uh, see, uh, I've, I've actually uh, saw some people like this. So when this pastor uh, is leading one church, the I mean, his son is coming after him and leading his church. So is that OK to just continue uh, to his dad's vision? I mean, I, I'm not I'm not uh, agreeing with that. I, I should have our own vision. But but God is using them very greatly, like following his father's vision. Right. What about uh, that? What's your thought on that? Yeah, uh, I can't speak for others. Um, it's, it's like nepotism in the, in the Christian industry. So, <clears throat> uh, see, I think it, if the person who's taking over the mantle from the, if a son is taking over the mantle, if son or a daughter, whoever is taking over the, uh, the mantle from the father or the mother, um, if the person does not have a burden or a vision, it will not last long. Uh, you can try to manufacture uh, or you know, with your own strength, but eventually you will, you will become very tired, uh, and the growth will stop. It will become stagnant. Why? Because there is no vision. There's no burden personally, right? Um, but then, if that person chooses to seek the Lord, uh, and we see that in the Bible as well, Aaron and sons of Aaron were in priests, right? So it's, it's it was all there. Sometimes it's just a responsibility, and but. I, I think in this day and age, uh, it has to come down to the burden. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. Um, because that's what I think. Um, see, I come from a family of people who are involved in ministry. Um, my uncle has a church and you know and we we, we all know uh, the pressure uh, or we call uh, you know what pk is right you know what a pk is yeah pastor's kids <laughs> it's a universal language by the way okay you're a pk yeah so um <laughs> as in so the pressure on a pastor's kid is huge because everybody is looking at him and like hey look at this pastor's kid see how he is and most of the time the kid because of that pressure, they break, right? Because it's see, living a Christian life as is is challenging, right? It, it is challenging, and then living with the responsibility and the burden and the weight on a young shoulder uh, with certain expectation um, is not fair. I would say that, um, but it it is what it is, uh, isn't it? So, yeah. Okay. Um, Nina, you wanted to say something? Okay, cool. Uh, how about you guys online? Are all of you okay? we following. Okay, one other bad quality uh, Nina has mentioned is not consistent. And I think not being consistent in, uh, it could be in so many different factors in what they say, what they do. Uh, you know, if they're not consistent, uh, yeah, I think consistency is such a beautiful um, point. It's discipline. It talks about discipline, isn't it? Being consistent. Uh, yeah, and yeah, being on time, uh, as in yeah, our seasons are consistent. At least for so far, so long, it was consistent. If summer comes late, what will happen to the world? Our seasons are consistent, isn't it? Winter, if winter comes late, we all start talking about it. Isn't it? Everybody was talking about the month of August uh, last month. Is for the first time in hundred years in Bangalore, it hasn't rained in the month of August. You know, there's like a certain inconsistency, and everybody starts talking about it and the global warming, weather, you know, climate, and all of that. You know? So yeah, consistency is a good thing. Um, yeah, we can talk about it more. Actually, you know what? We'll stop here because um, the next section has quite a lot to uh, go. So I don't want to just. 
take five minutes. So we'll stop here. We'll come back and we'll resume. All right. Take care.